Last year, I made a guide on how to For Honor in 2020 with the intention of helping new and returning players avoid getting completely curb stomped. Now, I've gotta do it all again, since between that last video and now, the core combat update, two new heroes, several hero reworks, and the balance of my bank account have all dropped. Thankfully, since Year 5 began, the dev team has been creating sources of information to help players who don't know what they're doing, and have even worked with prominent members of the community such as Freeze and the Filthy Spaniard. I have links to those resources below so you too can acquire knowledge and stop complaining about problems that don't exist. However, these guides are definitely more useful if you have some idea of what's going on in For Honor. Enter this video, where I'm trying to reintroduce older players and completely introduce new players to the game in its current state. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering. If you literally have no idea what For Honor is, we'll start there and touch on what game modes still have players and are worth queuing into. We'll then discuss our lovely and welcoming community, go over what buttons do what, what major changes have occurred since 2017, and go more in depth as to why and when to push those buttons. We'll finish off with what various versions of the game there are, and how if you live in NA, you should be using the code in my description to go buy the game. Instead of a section on each of the heroes, I'm just going to make videos on them individually so I can provide you with the most up-to-date information on the heroes as more reworks drop. So whether you're a newcomer, returning player, or a veteran watching this just because, here's How To For Honor in its current state, and I'll probably see you next year to do this all again. For Honor is a third-person fighting game set in a fantasy world featuring stylized interpretations of our history's finest warriors as they engage in brutal melee combat, argue about made-up rules, play dress-up, commit atrocious war crimes, and vigorously air hump. You play as a hero from one of four factions, knights, vikings, samurai, and Bulin, in one of several different game modes against fellow players or bots. The original three factions are fighting over the land's resources, with the knights having a heavy interest in lava because of a four-year-old joke, and the Wulin are just happy to be here, I guess, because they still haven't done anything. After each match, you place troops on a contested space of your choosing to help win it for your faction. The faction with the most spaces at the end of a campaign wins that round, and each season is a best of five campaigns, with the rewards being XP boosts, scavenger crates, and other rewards based on your faction's place. I mentioned in the last video it bugged me that members from each faction can fight alongside each other and it ruined my immersion, so Yubi decided to create a magical space rock known as Draconite that the newest two heroes used to rally warriors from all four factions to their clubs, the Horkos and Chimera alliances. This is a TLDR of lore honor as of right now, but it has yet to actually change the faction war, and if it hasn't changed yet, it probably won't be changing. Watch that age like milk. There's currently 28 different heroes among 4 different classes, with 2 heroes still to come this year. Unlike For Honor with guns, there are no characters locked behind an attacker or defender team, and there is no single pick. The more you play with a specific hero, the more you'll level them up. And once you hit level 20, the next level will reset you back to 1 and you'll gain a reputation point, which is just a way of counting how many times you've reached level 20. Your total reputation level is also viewable so you can be judged on how little or how much time you've sunk into the game. You might be wondering then, what's the point of leveling and repping up heroes? Aside from unlocking superpowers and 4v4 modes, fashion. Leveling up a hero unlocks new cosmetics so you can look as unique or as unoriginal as you want. You can use scavenger crates to instantly find 5 pieces of gear for a chosen hero, however I recommend waiting until you're a higher rep with them so you can find more rare gear. After each match ends, you sit through 82 pop-ups and scavenge the battlefield for weapons and armor to further increase your fashion score and give you situational boosts in the 4v4 game modes. Upgrading the right gear can eventually unlock up to 3 different perks, and you don't have to worry about looking like this since you can change the look of your gear to anything you've already unlocked, if you have the steel. You earn steel by completing matches and orders or stealing mom's credit card, and it can be used on any hero to purchase outfits, ornaments, effects, mm -hmm. emotes, executions, power ranger armor, and more. You can also buy champion status with it for a cool banner next to your name and additional XP earned at the end of each match. Steel can also be used to unlock heroes, with the base game heroes costing 500 steel and DLC heroes costing 20,000 steel each. As a live service game in 2021, it's a given that For Honor also has a battle pass system. Each season there's a free and premium pass, with the premium pass giving more rewards than the free pass. And anytime there's an event, there's also a free event pass with a lower number of tiers for you to earn limited time event themed cosmetics. You progress through any of the passes as you complete any of For Honor's game modes. There are 8 different game modes in For Honor with special event game modes or testing grounds that also happen quite frequently. Duel and Brawl are best of 5 1v1 and 2v2 fights respectively. Whether Brawl is 2v2 or 2 1v1s is up to you. The sorely underplayed deathmatch playlist has both Elimination and Skirmish game modes in it. Elimination is a 4v4 version of Brawl with boosts around the map to change things up. However, just like Brawl, whether it's a 4v4 or 4 1v1s is a topic of debate that For Honor players will never agree upon, and one of the main reasons this mode died. 
Skirmish is COD's team deathmatch minus the automatic rifles. If your team reaches 1000 points, you will put the enemy team in breaking, meaning they can no longer respond and you'll win once you finish them off. Skirmish died off because whatever team won the first team fight tended to snowball and dominate the rest of the match. Dominion is the most popular mode in For Honor. Two four player teams fight over three zones on the map in a race to 1000 points. Points are earned for killing other players and small persons or by capturing zones. Each zone gives an immediate 100 point bonus to whichever team is holding that zone, so stealing a zone also steals that 100 point bonus. Once captured, a zone will passively earn your team points. You can boost the rate at which points are earned and heal by standing in an own zone. However, you don't get more points the more teammates are in a zone, so your three allies emote spamming on the other end of the map are actually losing you the game. Two of the three zones can be captured by standing in it for a few seconds while there's no enemies inside it. The third zone is the minion lane, an endless tug of war between each team's minions. Like mosquitoes, these annoying pests will hurt a little and interrupt what you're doing, but are really easy to take down. Your team gets one point per minion killed, and if you help your minions get to the other side, your team will gain the 100 points bonus for holding the zone. However, you cannot heal or boost by standing in the minion lane. Just like in Skirmish, when one team reaches a thousand points, the other team is put into breaking and will not respond when they're killed. However, if they capture a zone and lower your team's points under a thousand, they will rally. When one team's bar locks, it means they have a thousand points even without holding the zones and the other team is completely unable to rally. A team wins when the other team is broken and all their players are dead. The first game mode added to For Honor post-launch was Tribute in Year 1 Season 3. Ubisoft's take on Medieval Capture the Flag was quickly abandoned by the player base and you'll be lucky to find a match now. Three flags spawn in the middle of the map and you have to bring it back to your base and put it in an offering. While carrying a flag, you'll move slower and will drop it if you're hit by an enemy. When you bring it back to your side of the map, you can choose one of the three offerings to give your team a buff. Extra health, extra muscles, or a UAV. Flags in the offerings can be stolen and the buff they gave will be lost. The more flags your team has, the longer your respawn timer will be, and once you capture all three flags, the other team has just 45 seconds to remove a single flag or it's game over. If neither team manages to capture all the flags, after 10 minutes, the game goes into sudden death, in which whatever team has more flags after one final minute is the winner. If it's a tie, it's a tie. Breach is the newest game mode and was added with the Marching Fire expansion. If you ever want to play a Breach game, just make sure your schedule is clear because some matches can last up to 30 minutes. As Breach games take so long and sometimes you're put into an unwinnable situation with nothing to do but slowly wait for your inevitable loss, it's been unable to dethrone Dominion as the favored game mode. Attackers have to protect a battering ram from the defender's archers and minions, so it can tell a knock-knock joke to the defender's gates. One attacker should be with the ram at all times to help it move faster and protect it from enemy players and pikemen who can stop the ram from progressing altogether and damage it. The other players should be pushing on the upper levels to eliminate the defender's archers and replace them with their own. When attackers claim these points, they cannot be reclaimed by the defenders. If a ram is docked at a gate, the defenders can give their guests a bowl of hot soup as a welcome gift. In the first two phases when the battering ram is in play, a shield banner will spawn which can be captured by the attackers if they bring it to the ram or the defenders if they bring it behind the cauldron. In all three phases there is a little healing area which needs to be captured before your team can use it. In the second phase, a neutral guardian will spawn after some time and whichever team slays him will gain a medieval super soldier serum giving a full health shield, unlimited stamina, and the ability to one-shot pikemen. If the attackers make it through the second gate, they gain a number of lives relative to the amount of HP remaining on the ram and have to kill the AI commander before they run out of lives to win. The defenders win a game of breach either by destroying the ram before the game enters the third phase or reducing the attackers lives to zero in the final phase. If a player leaves mid-match, they're replaced by a bot playing as the same hero. Leaving mid-match puts you in a timeout and you can't play with other players for 10 minutes. Also added with the Marching Fire expansion is the Arcade Mode. This versus AI mode is only available to players who own the Marching Fire expansion and is good for lore, arcade exclusive cosmetics, and high amounts of sodium chloride. The game also has a single player or co-op campaign letting you get familiar with some of the heroes. However, it's a window to the past as it doesn't have the most up-to-date changes made to the game, and I don't recommend starting here if you want an introduction to combat in For Honor. Instead, use the game's Apprentice and Warrior Trials for a hands-on tutorial on what buttons do what. I've already made a video discussing the For Honor community, so check that out if you want. But here's a TLDW. At base value, For Honor's community can look like an environment that Miyazaki would use in his video games, but then you'd be overlooking all the genuinely cool players just here to have a good time. Do it, kill the gladiator. I want to see what the warmonger does. Yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them. Oh no, what's GG Thobbit gonna do? <laughs> oh no, the warmonger. <laughs> I fucking love this game, man. This is great. 
It's easier to see a lot of the hive mind BS, especially on the forum social media platforms, but these people are not representative of the community as a whole. The community will always have differing opinions on everything. Fighting games require a lot of time and investment to get good at them, and For Honor is no exception. With the amount of time put in, players are more mentally and emotionally invested than in other games, so they tend to be very passionate about their opinions. And For Honor is a little bit more of an approachable fighting game than most other games as well. I truly believe that all For Honor players want what's best for the game, but everyone's opinion on what's best for the game differs. Like all other fighting games, your goal in For Honor is to delete your opponent's health bar before they delete yours. Unlike most traditional fighting games that have two opponents locked on either end of a screen and can block teeth, tits, or toes covering two areas at a time, For Honor heroes are free to run around the map, block left, right, and top one at a time, and can face multiple opponents at once. Once you lock onto an opponent, your guard stays in one direction until you move it. Unless you're playing as an assassin or Shaolin whose guards expire after a short time or after blocking because they still use an outdated and archaic guard system. To block incoming attacks, match the direction of the red arrow. If an opponent you aren't locked onto attacks you, it'll come out on the side they're physically on, which which gets really complicated when they're right behind you. After blocking, for a short time you will block in all directions to help fend off multiple attacks. A few heroes can even block all directions at once or access a special stance by blocking backwards. Your light and heavy attacks come out in the same direction that your guard is in, and unsurprisingly light attacks are faster and deal less damage than heavy attacks. Pressing the light and heavy attack button simultaneously throws a zone attack. Each hero has a specific zone attack that comes out from a set direction with their own unique properties and quirks. Be careful what direction you swing your weapon in, as swinging into a wall will make you look really stupid. You can also jump off of ledges to kill opponents. Plunging attacks insta-kill, but if your target dodges or gets out of range, you'll take fall damage or break every bone in your body. Every hero also has their own combos or attack chains, meaning they can follow up certain moves immediately with other certain moves. Warden, for example, can chain together a light into a heavy, but not a heavy into a light. Blocked heavies will chip away at the defender's health and let the attacker keep attacking. Blocked light attacks will stop the chain dead in its tracks unless their hero has enhanced light attacks, which don't bounce off an opponent's guard. Some heroes have superior blocks that cause regular attacks to bounce off this block no matter what. If you throw a heavy in the direction of an attack as the indicator flashes, you'll parry the attack and stun the enemy. Parrying a light attack is harder, and you're rewarded with being able to hit the opponent harder. Parrying one attack also parries other incoming attacks for a short period of time. Heroes with superior block attacks can use them to block and attack in one move. You can dodge left, right, or backwards. This is not a dodge, it's a dash. You can't dodge shit with it. Dodges have what are called dodge frames that let you avoid attacks if you time it right. However, you have to also physically move out of the way of the attack, so trying to dodge when you're locked into a corner won't work. Some heroes have moves with invincibility or eye frames that will let them avoid moves even when they're locked into a corner. Forward dashes don't have dodge frames, however they can help put you just out of range of some attacks and let you avoid them. Double tapping dodge when locked on or dodging when out of lock will roll. They are great for avoiding mix-ups and medieval nukes. Several heroes have attacks out of dodges or dashes, and all assassins along with a few other heroes can dodge or dash in the direction of the attack at the last second to deflect and perform a unique counterattack. Attacks with blue streaks are undodgeable, and trying to dodge them will not work. Guard breaks open up an opponent to a free hit, or you can throw them in a direction of your choosing. If you throw an opponent into a wall, it stuns them for a bit longer and in many cases allows you to land stronger attacks. You can also throw opponents into other heroes to splat and stun them. Much like real life, throwing someone into fire will set them on fire, and throwing them into spikes or off a high ledge will kill them instantly. Heroes thrown off a shorter ledge will take fall damage and get knocked down, leaving them open to other attacks. Guard breaks or GBs can be countered by pressing the guard break button after being guard broken. However, guard breaks are guaranteed when grabbing someone who is dodging or at the start of a neutral heavy attack. Once upon a time, GBs were guaranteed after parries, but the dev team learned parrying isn't hard and removed that. For more situational guard break vulnerabilities, check out this video from Freeze. Most heroes can't guard while attacking, so getting hit mid-move will interrupt you unless your move has uninterruptible property, or hyper armor because it's a lot easier to say. It lets some heroes power through other attacks without being stopped. Good for trading. Some heroes can make you bleed, which makes you take additional damage over time. Getting bonked on the head by some heroes will blind you momentarily. Orange moves are unblockable and can't be blocked. Bashes are orange moves without a directional indicator, don't care about hyper armor, and for the most part guarantee a follow-up attack or deal direct damage. Some bashes even wall splat, allowing you to land more damaging attacks than you normally could. The only way to avoid these is by dodging. Unblockable attacks have a directional indicator and can be dodged or parried. Heavy attacks, most unblockable attacks, certain zone attacks, and some bashes can be cancelled or fainted. If you suspect that your opponent may parry or dodge your attack, you can cancel it and counter their counter. 
Some attacks can even be soft fainted, flowing directly from one move to another instead of canceling and starting a new movement. Throwing and fainting moves, rolling, or getting hit by stamina draining moves cost stamina, and if your green bar runs out, you'll go colorblind, attack slower, and get knocked down when parried or thrown. Since opponents can't defend themselves when they are groundbound, it's wise to know the optimal out of stamina punishes for your favorite heroes for massive damage. Your stamina will regenerate over time when not attacking or getting hit by moves that drain stamina or pause stamina regeneration. If you finish an opponent off with a heavy attack, you can execute them to regain health and in team game modes, prevent them from being revived and delay their respawn. Your revive progress is halted if you're hit by an enemy or a minion. The opponent isn't executed until the skull appears over their head. If you're interrupted before that, the player can still be revived. The longer it takes until the opponent is executed, the more health you'll regain. However, you can't counter guard break when performing an execution, so keep that in mind in team situations. In 4v4 game modes, fighting against two or more players will fill your revenge meter. It fills when blocking, parrying, or getting guard broken, bashed, and hit by attacks. Activating revenge lets you go Super Saiyan complete with a yellow glow and parries any incoming attacks. While in revenge, you get extra health, damage, can't be interrupted, and knock down anyone you throw or parry. You can see how close an opponent is to revenge by looking at the gold outline surrounding the shield next to their name, so be aware of feeding revenge. To counter revenge, you can simply walk away or use Black Prior's funny feet. <laughs> also available in 4v4 modes are feats. These abilities range from absolutely busted to completely useless. This is worthless. Each hero has four tiers of feats with three different options for each tier. You unlock these feats as you earn renown, and each hero earns renown differently. As you can see, assassins are feast or famine, while heavies earn renown simply for existing. You can talk with your teammates and enemies using the game's quick chat. You can call allies for help or a revive and give them a heads up of where an enemy is headed. You can spam wow and thanks as you emote on an enemy's corpse if you want to be branded as an asshole. If this was all confusing, don't worry, most of this is explained in the game's hands-on tutorials. The rest just comes with experience. Most 2017 Forerunner players won't recognize the game in its current state with a whole new faction and a dozen more heroes. On top of that, minion kill animations are gone, Stunning Tap is now Storming Tap, Stunning Trap is now Storming Trap, <laughs> Shigoki's passive Hyper Armor is gone, Bash is no longer knocked down in Revenge, Conqueror doesn't have passive Superior Block, you can't place a million traps on the ground anymore, Team Colors are a thing of the past, minions now interrupt executions and healing, MINIONS! And most noticeably, attacks are faster. In mid-2020, just after I released How To For Honor 2020, the core combat update dropped and shook up a few things. Aside from general damage and health number tweaks, there were important changes to indicators, stamina, and frame advantage. Prior to the CCU, the time at which attack indicators were displayed to players could be altered due to delaying the attack as well as general latency. To ensure consistency across the board, the first 100 milliseconds of indicators and animations of attacks are hidden from the defenders. And as a result, everyone's attacks come out a bit faster, making offense more viable than having a staring contest waiting for the first sucker to make a move and get parried into oblivion. At least, getting parried no longer drains your stamina, so you don't need to worry about throwing attacks, getting parried twice, and immediately being out of stamina. Light attacks also cost a bit more stamina, and in most cases, light finishers give frame disadvantage to the attacker. In contrast to incentivize throwing heavies, combo ending heavies give the attacker frame advantage. Because of the CCU and other changes, fights are now more read based than reaction based. I know that word scares some of you and many of you don't even know what a read is, but most of you are probably making reads without even realizing. Contrary to popular belief, reads are not blind guesses, but rather educated predictions based on the capabilities of the heroes in play and the playstyles of the players controlling them. So now more than ever, character and map knowledge is essential. But the thing is, even before the CCU, you could make reads. In fact, in some cases you had to. Warden's Shoulder Bash was one of a few mix-ups that actually existed before the CCU because it was unreactable, and you had to make a correct read to counter it. If you look at it this way, even something as simple as baiting out Kensei's dodge attack with a fainted heavy is a read because you predicted they would do that. So look at you! making reads and not even realizing it. Whenever you perform an action, there's a brief pause before you can perform another. This pause is your recovery time. While recovering, you're vulnerable to attacks and guard breaks. The recovery timings vary from move to move and hero to hero and can change depending on if an attack hits or if it whiffs. Many heroes have ways to cancel the recoveries by performing certain moves. Freeze has a very in-depth guide on recoveries if you want more specifics. Similarly, there's a brief moment after blocking or getting hit where you're stunned and can't do anything, affecting the time you have to deal with incoming attacks and changing your options. Because light attack hit stun has a lower recovery, it means you can dodge any light, light chain attacks after getting hit by the first one, rather than guessing what direction a light may come out of. However, you can't dodge a third light if you're hit by the first and dodge the second. Because of the longer heavy hit stun recovery, after getting hit by a heavy attack, a follow-up light attack cannot be dodged, only blocked, or parried, and in some cases deflected. 
Heavy block stun works the same way, only there seems to be more cases where a deflect is possible. Again, this all varies from hero to hero. Enhanced light attacks are weird, so I'll also just cover them in each hero's video. After one player has finished an attack chain, frame advantage dictates who will recover first, and if both players immediately throw an attack, whose will come out first. If I end a chain with a light attack, the opponent has frame advantage, and if we both open with light attacks, theirs will hit first. If I end a chain with a heavy attack, I have frame advantage, so my attack will come out first. When you're at frame disadvantage, you can still block, parry, or dodge an incoming attack. There are of course exceptions to the frame advantage rule, but we'll go over that when we start covering each hero. Ganking is a term used when you outnumber an opponent, and getting ganked is when you are the one outnumbered. When you're ganking, it's important not to be an idiot and hit your teammates, ruin their punishes, or feed revenge. Hitting your teammates obviously interrupts them, but also minimally damages them so you can actually kill them. There's also many moves that stunlock heroes so they cannot defend or activate revenge, such as Gladiator's Toe Stab, Shinobi's Sickle Slaps, and Lawbringer's Long Dong of the Law. There's also two that heal the attacker, Shigoki's Hug and Shaman's Neck Kisses. In all of these cases, you should be waiting until after they finish the attack before throwing your own attacks to ensure the maximum damage is applied and potentially your teammates' bellies are filled. Another thing to keep in mind is damage reduction, which Freeze covers excellently here. Be aware that immediately after throwing an enemy, for example, an opponent takes reduced damage, so your super strong move might only exist to feed revenge. Getting ganked is often a death sentence since block, bash, and hit stun can be used to guarantee attacks on you. So the biggest thing to do is not get frustrated that you're not Varam, and one in a situation where the odds are heavily against you. When getting ganked, remember that parries give more revenge gain than blocking, however blocking is less risky. One trick to help make blocking easier is target swapping, so instead of guessing one out of three directions an attack may come out of from opponent A, you now only have to worry about one direction. You can also use target swapping to your advantage offensively. Some attacks have wide hitboxes that can strike multiple opponents. Opponents you aren't locked onto can only block or dodge an attack you throw, meaning they can't parry unblockable attacks. Also, I don't care what anyone says, running away to fight another day is strategic no matter how annoying it is. Finally, we have the most controversial section of the video that may be getting changed eventually anyways, option selects. Option selects are an input or series of inputs that cover multiple situations, like playing with two hands and rock, paper, scissors against one. When the word option select is tossed around, most people think of a zone parry option select. Matching the direction of an incoming attack and inputting a zone attack will either parry the attack or throw out your zone, forcing the opponent to go on the defensive either way. I won't cover the other more controversial option selects that are immensely unhealthy for the game, but thankfully most option selects can be countered by a feint into light, although be aware that your opponent may read that you are countering with this. Of all the sections in this video, this is the one that I think will be outdated soon as there are rumors of an upcoming testing grounds dealing with input sanitization, so we'll see the removal of parry option selects. So if you've gotten this far and you already own For Honor, the only thing you have to do now is boot it up, get back into the game, and have fun. If you don't have the game and you're looking to buy For Honor, you've got several options. On PC, you've got more choices with the Starter and Ubisoft Plus editions being present. And if you buy or you have previously purchased the Starter edition, there are ways to upgrade to the full editions. If you've luckily managed to get your hands on a PS5 or an Xbox Sex, you've got the game from the PS4 and the Xbox One respectively, with a graphic and frame rate patch to make the game prettier and smoother on the current gen consoles. If you're on a PS4 and an Xbox One, sorry you're still capped at 30 FPS. Now if you decide to purchase the game, steal, or battle pass through Ubisoft's website, please consider using one of the links in my description as Yubi gives me a small crumb for me to feed my family with. If you're still looking for further information, Freeze, the competitive subreddit, and Barak Yeet have plenty of content to inform and help you be a better player. If you'd like more Marco, then subscribe and follow me over on Twitch where I'll be streaming 3-4 to four times a week. In fact, some of the footage seen in this video was captured on stream. If you miss any of my streams, don't worry because I have a second channel where I'll be uploading highlights and other stupid memes. I'd like to thank you for watching, thank my Patreon supporters for enabling my addiction, especially Bioballs, Isaiah, Sweckles, and Kyle, and I'll see you on the next video.